I'm going to show you how I built this beautiful Douglas fir door and another one just like it as part of my garden shed build. Stay with me and I'll show you all the tools and techniques. So what I'm doing is I'm making shaker panel doors using 2x6 and 2x8 Douglas fir as well as some half inch marine grade plywood also in Douglas fir. It's going to be weatherproof once it's primed. I'm using the Domino 700 machine to make the joints between my rails and stiles. Domino will just insert in the rail and then the rail into the style like so. And after that I'm going to use the OF2200 router to route a half inch groove to receive the marine grade plywood. I'm also going to show you how I made the plywood look like beadboard on my table saw. And finally, I'm going to use the West Systems epoxy with a longer setup time so there'll be less headaches when I do the uh, glue up. And I hope you enjoy the video. So a couple of these long pieces of uh, Douglas fir have a little bit of a bowl in them. So rather than use the table saw, I'm going to use this uh, track saw system here. And this is the TS-75, which is a little, a little more um, power than the TS-55. Once one side is perfectly straight, then trim off the rounded edge of the fur on the table saw. Next you're going to plane all the fur to a desired thickness, in my case 1 and 3 eighths. So right here we have some uh, tear out from the planer and it's my fault because what I should have done, the first time you run a piece of lumber through a thickness planer, if it comes out nice and smooth with no tear out, don't just flip it over like this because now you're going to actually, actually go the opposite direction to the, to the grain. Uh, spin the board end for end and that way you won't run into this problem. As, as luck uh, would, would help us here, this gets cut off anyway, but that's the best, the best practice for when you're running stuff through a thickness planer. So Alden is vacuuming up the uh, chips with the uh, Festool MIDI, but I'm using a Cyclone uh, on the Festool MIDI and it saves on bags. It's a really good uh, option. You can see that thing just fills right up and then later on we can dump it out so now that I have these styles prepared for the door, I'm going to figure out the length of the rail. And rather than do mathematics, which is always complicated when you're dealing with an overall dimension like we are here of 31 and 7 eighths, I'm simply going to put my tape measure on the edge of the board at 31 and 7 eighths. Now if I look at this side of my temp or tape measure, I read 21 and 3 eighths. So that's going to be the length of my rail. After I made my first cut on the uh, rail, I discovered that the Douglas fir has really got a lot of blow up when you pass the saw through on the back end. So what I did was I put an auxiliary fence 
on the Festool uh, Capex and then uh, just uh, screwed it to the back of the fence. Uh, there's some little holes there for access. Yeah, so these uh, are the vertical styles on the on the door and these are going to be 82 inches long roughly. This one here has got a bit of a bow to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair the bowed piece with a straight one and I'm going to make sure that I use this bowed style uh, for the hinge side because the hinges will actually straighten out the, uh, the curve. You don't want to have a curve, especially on double doors like what we're making, on the on the side where the door handle goes. I've used some other videos on YouTube as resources for this job and I've put the links in the description of my video. I've chosen 12 by 140 millimeter dominoes for maximum holding power. You know, where I live in Thunder Bay in Northern Ontario, God throws a major switch between fall and winter, sometime in late November, early December. You never know quite when it's going to come. But one morning you'll wake up and there's mountains of snow. Time to get the snow blower out. And it does put a bit of a damper on my grouse hunting with my Vesla Autumn. Mark all your domino lines clearly so there is no confusion. The larger setting on the Domino 700 makes holes slightly bigger for ease and assembly. I also take the edge off the Dominoes so it will help with disassembly after dry fitting the door. Well, I'm all set up to uh, route the groove and the rail and styles uh, on these doors, two of them. And what I'm going to use is a half inch uh, marine grade plywood in these doors here. Uh, the groove is going to be cut by this uh, half inch uh, bit on my OF2200 router. The only thing is that it's a little bit too snug on the plywood, so I'll have to make a second uh, pass 
uh, and lower the blade, just make it maybe a 32nd or even a 16th uh, bigger than the plywood, so the assembly goes well. The OF, the Festool OF 2200 router is the biggest uh, router that uh, Festool makes. It's a real powerhouse of a machine, uh, but because it runs on uh, or run pulls 18 amps, you have to have the router plugged in uh, to another circuit than the vacuum, and that's the only tool that I know of that Festool makes that you can't have in series with the vacuum. So uh, I'm going to do a couple of passes uh, on what's called a climb cut going, going the opposite direction so I don't uh, go too deep and, and result in tear out. And then I'm going to finish off going the proper way which will be clockwise as I'm looking here and route that groove. After that we'll take the door apart because it's just dry fit together right now and um, cut the plywood, insert the panels, and do the glue up. So uh, wish me well. I normally hang the cord and hose from the ceiling with a loop of elastic to get it out of the way. Now I do a micro adjustment to make the channel slightly larger. It's a good idea to check the bearing and screw throughout the process to make sure it's not coming loose. Determining the dimensions of these plywood uh, inserts for these doors is a prime example of where metric is so much simpler. All you do is take your measurements, add the uh, depth of the groove, which is 10 millimeters on each side, then subtract about 3 millimeters to give yourself a little bit of uh, breathing room when you make your assembly, and the dimensions are straightforward. Do it in Imperial, and it's absolutely mind-boggling. Notice the scoring blade here. It turns the opposite direction of the main blade and prevents chipping. So what I've done here is made my own beadboard. This is an idea I got from uh, Joey on uh, King Post Timberworks uh, channel. Um, you just uh, set your saw at a 45 degree angle and uh, put the blade slightly above the table. And then what I've done is I've divided the 560 panel um, into, into intervals of 80 uh, millimeters and just move the fence over 80 millimeters at a time and uh, that blade leaves a nice little triangle shaped bead in the plywood.
The plywood corners need to be rounded off to fit in the routed channel. All the plywood edges need to be sanded to aid in assembly. I'm going to put a slight chamfer on the inside edges of the rails and stiles with this cordless DeWalt trim router with a chamfer bit prior to doing the assembly because I won't be able to do that once the plywood is installed into the rails and stiles. I always cover my bench with brown paper prior to any glue up or painting project. Here I'm doing a final dry fit before the glue up. Rubbing down the wood with mineral spirits will show all the saw marks. Sand them off. Well, it's time. I'm going to do the glue up. I'm going to use a product called uh, G Flex from West System. It's a sort of peanut butter um, ish uh, consistency of uh, epoxy, and it's a long working epoxy, so I have an extended uh, working time. And um, that's what I'm hoping for in case I run into uh, problems with the glue up. I've got a little forgiveness there. Don't have white glue that's setting up real quick and throwing a wrench into things. So.
Well, I've done the second glue up and uh, I'm relieved. Uh, went really well. This time the plywood panels were a little difficult getting into the groove, so maybe I could have made that groove a little bigger with the rudder. I also found that uh, using the uh, three foot level as a straight edge, I found this corner was curling up, so I clamped it down. And uh, so overall, um, that is the uh, hardest part all come together and it looks good. So next will be the sanding and prep. One of the things that I do in preparation for, for glue ups is I mark all my pieces so I know that I'm joining the, the appropriate pieces together. And I also make reference marks so I know when they're lined up properly. And this is all done on the dry fit. And the dry fit is also the key to having a good end product. Uh, when you dry fit everything, before you put the glue to it, uh, then you know if you're going to run into problems with things fitting properly. And uh, just, just use that, follow that system and you'll have way less problems. The Festool Rapid Clamp is really handy for repetitive cuts. I was concerned about sanding the dry epoxy, but sanding for a few seconds cleaned it up nicely. I applied a bead of paintable caulk called Top Gun between plywood panels and the frames. Finally, the doors are primed with Zinsser Oil-Based Primer. They'll receive a final coat of paint in the spring. Well, I hope you enjoyed that build as much as I did. You know, carpentry has always been a passion of mine. As some of you may know, I'm a retired police officer. I retired after 30 years in 2011 and in 2012 started finishing touch carpentry. In January of 2021, I started my YouTube channel. If you're new to woodworking or you're well established, you'll know that there's always things to learn. And that's my goal here is to pass on my knowledge so that we can all improve our work and joy would work uh, to the full. I hope to bring many more videos to you in 2022. So please like, subscribe, join the team and help grow the channel. If you have any questions on this video or any others, please leave them in the comments and I'll be sure and answer them.